Reach Up the Science Podcast with your girl and with an Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 49 of the Root of the Science Podcasts. As you can probably tell, this episode is going to be a little bit different. We're kind of flipping the script a bit on this one. So my name is Natasha Mwanigwa. I'm a Zimbabwean PhD student currently in Luxembourg and the co-founder of Visibility STEM Africa. I have the incredible privilege of guest hosting the season finale of the Root of the Science podcasts. And my amazing guest is none other than the inspiring founder and host of this podcast, Miss Anne with an E herself. In part one of the season one finale, we get to learn more about Miss Anne Chisa, a Malawian who spent 20 years living in South Africa. She details her journey into STEM, which was far from smooth sailing, and she tells us about the different challenges she's faced from high school, undergrad, and master's level, and how she was able to overcome them through hard work, perseverance, and the incredible support of her parents. She tells us about her latest endeavor, a PhD in the agricultural sciences at the University of KwaZulu-Natal in South Africa, and gives us an insight into the fascinating transdisciplinary project she's involved in that seeks to restore local environments and ecosystems in rural areas through tree planting and sustainably repurposing waste. Tune in to hear all about this and so, so much more. I am so excited for all of you to get inspired by this incredible gem for young women. Enjoy. Hi, Anne. Hi, Natasha. How are you doing? I'm so good. I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm great. I'm, no, actually not nervous. I'm excited. Excited? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, me too. Uh, this is going to be really fun. So I'm super, super excited and really privileged to be interviewing you today. Um, I think it's going to be really interesting to have you in the hot seat for once. So uh, I hope you're ready because I'm going to be grilling you a bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm ready. I can feel already the seat is getting warm and like my palms are getting sweaty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nah, nah, it's all chill, it's all chill. So I just want to jump straight into it. But before we actually get into the interview about who you are, what you've been working on with this podcast, about your science, I wanted to start with a bit of, a, of an icebreaker, a bit of a like, quick fire session with you. Does all that right, sound cool. good? Yeah. Yeah, go. So the plan is I'm just going to ask you a couple of really random questions and you just have to answer them as quickly as possible. Don't think, just... Just go. All right. Cool. So first question, hot or cold? Cold. Describe teenage Anne in three words. Sure. Um, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, energetic. And uh, I want to say fun. Yeah, fun. Fun. Cool. Cool. Um, now describe Anne today in three words. Wow. Um, ambitious. Okay. Uh, determined mm -hmm. and uh, very open-minded. We love it. <laughs> I loved. I love the growth. Like those two answers are very uh, different. That that's that's amazing to hear. But moving on, what is a random pet peeve that you have? Oh, um, I'm very impatient, so I hate being kept waiting. Like, yeah, if we agree on like, let's say we're meeting at twelve, like this is in-person meeting. Mm -hmm. Like I'm there probably at 10 to 12. So I expect you to be there at 12. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I feel that. I feel that. Yeah. So unless you tell me like an hour before that you're going to be late. Then yeah, that's just okay. communicate. But don't like, yeah, don't come at like 10 to 12. And then you're like, oh no, Anne, sorry, I'm late. Like, no. <laughs> No, don't do that. Because I'm already there. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> okay, so morning person or night person? Definitely a morning person. I wake up at like in the wee a.m.s um, of the morning. So definitely. I, I sleep at like half nine. I'm like ready to oh. call it a night. Oh, well, I need your secret <laughs> because I, I suck at morning. So we need to discuss this podcast how to <laughs> integrate that in my life. Okay, so yeah. now describe describe 2020 in three words. Wow. Wow is a word. <laughs> it's a great um, one. <laughs> wow. And so many different friends. Um, let's go for... It's... It's been um, eye-opening, like very eye-opening. 
and um, a year of being fearless. I think that's the other word. Okay, awesome. Awesome. Wow, eye-opening fearless. I'm guessing mm-hmm. eye-opening is hyphenated and we're making it one word. Yeah, one definitely. Word, but we'll take it. We'll take it. It's, <laughs> exactly. Gotcha. No worries. <laughs> okay, the last quick, last quick fire question. If you could have any three people, dead or alive, over for dinner, who would they be? And second part of the question, what would you eat? Oh, um, dead or alive, Michelle Obama, mm. uh, one, Tony Robbins, um, and who else? Um, Miles Monroe. Yeah, those are the three people. I don't know. Those are the three that came to mind. It could, it could change. Um, okay. what would we and eat? what would you eat? What would you eat? <laughs> Oh, my word. I would cook, first of all. Uh, <laughs> we love it. We would, what yeah, would you make would... for Michelle Obama and these other two gentlemen you mentioned? <laughs> um, I'd look for like a really cool recipe. So off the top of my head, this is my favorite, uh, my sister's favorite meal. And mm. I think it's my classics. She calls it um, all sorts like macar- like pasta. Mm. So it's like a sort of like a pasta where with like chicken and like cheese, last, last cheese and bacon mm-hmm. and mushrooms and greens Ooh. and it's just yeah it's like creamy pasta deluxe i think Ooh. i'll make that that sounds and so decadent mm, yeah definitely i hope oh, yeah. none of them are like lactose intolerant <laughs> or vegan you know or vegan, that's also... <laughs> or they don't eat pork <laughs> that is true thanks for the answers just wanted to start with a bit of something random just to get to know you in a more uh, you know personal way with some some questions but yeah. now we'll get into um more the nitty-gritty details of who Anne is so would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself who is Anne where she from just a bit of background so that your listeners can get to know you a little bit better yeah sure so my name is Anne Chisa or Anne Linda Chisa in full um I'm originally from Malawi and then I came to South Africa when I was pretty young. So I'm, li- I'm currently living and studying in South Africa. But we moved here when I was pretty young. So I was, I was about like six years old. So I've been here for about 20 years this year, which is ridiculous. It's crazy. But we, we frequent uh, Malawi back and forth. I am a current PhD student in agriculture sciences. Um, I am also the founder and the host of The Root of the Science of your girl, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and um, yeah, I love people. Mm-hmm. So I love communicating with people. I love engaging with people. And I love learning from people. And um, th- that is like one of my skills. So I just integrated that. I think it was like a sort of like a homecoming because I've done so many other things in the past that I think kind of led to this. Mm, um, mm-hmm. So yeah, that's in short. In that's short. Who Anne is. <laughs> yeah, no, for, for sure. And we're going to get, uh, expand on most of those points uh, more in full soon. And I think it is, it's very apparent that you love learning from people and engaging with people just through this podcast. I, I, you know, I've listened to most of the episodes and you can tell that the enthusiasm you have, it comes through just through every episode. So it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. It's really, it's, it's lovely to, to hear this enthusiasm about learning from people and about people um but i i have a bit of a, a side question that just came to mind so you've been in south africa for for 20 years now uh, but you're originally m- from malawi but do you feel regarding identity do you feel south african do you feel malawi do you feel both like how do you if you feel anything yeah. that is <laughs> that is a that is a very um that's a very good question. I often get that, especially with my friends. And then they're mm-hmm. like, because most people assume that I am South African because mm-hmm. I don't sound Malawian. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I don't, I don't sound Malawian. Um, uh, so there's that. But I like to state, and I think that's how I always state it, mm-hmm. that I am Malawian because, yeah, I identify with that. I know some people mm-hmm. might be like, you are a sellout, you haven't been there for a long time. Sure, but that's where my roots are. 
mm-hmm. as much as South Africa is home, but I know the roots of like the Chisa roots of there's that thing that I know that at the heart, at the core, I am Malawian and I'm very proud of that identity to be Malawian as well. So yeah. Well, that makes complete sense. And um, I've also, you know, I, I, I spent my childhood in Botswana, but I'm originally Zimbabwean and I moved around. So the identity thing is always something I find very interesting to discuss with people, especially people who are not living where their parents are from, for example. Um, but I, I totally feel you and I, I completely get how, you know, the Chisa roots are the root of where you're from. But Hi. just to pivot there... Uh, going from cheese or roots to the roots of your science. Um, so I'm sure your listeners must know this, but for those who don't know, and with an E is actually in STEM herself. So we would love to know how you got into STEM. When did you realize you were interested in science? Did you always like it? Um, yeah. And how has that journey kind of gone for you? Yeah, so my journey into science is, a, is, a, is an odd one. Um, but one which I think I was reflecting back on this uh, day actually, and I was thinking it's my parents' fault. (laughs) (laughs) It usually is. (laughs) It usually is. Our African parents, you know, Mm -hmm. so it actually stems back to in high school, um, grade 10, I, we had to choose subjects, um, in terms of what you want to do. So of course, most parents say, take all the science subjects, your biology, your physics, and your geography. But I loved history, like, but Mm. I couldn't take history and the sciences together, which, again, there's a huge problem in the education system, but that's something totally different. Um, They wouldn't let us choose those streams. They They could never be combined. So because my parents are like, oh, sciences, there's more opportunities, blah, 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 blah. I took physics and I hated it. <laughs> I, hated it. I hated it. I hated it so much. And our 10th grade teacher was not the nicest person. And she really just um, discouraged us as a lot, especially because there was a, there was an A stream class. Oh, this is just an important, uh, this is an important note to anyone who thinks that for you to be in the sciences, you have to be the smartest one. I was not, I was just your average uh, <laughs> student. So there was the A stream uh, students and then I was, I was in the B stream students. Uh, so the teacher was like, none of, most of you guys don't belong here. You guys should quit. You guys are wasting my time. So she was wow. very like... That's terrible. negative to us. Yeah. So it was like only about 20% of you guys actually should be here. The rest of you just need to quit. So that of course, you know, good. when you say that to like a 15, 16 year old, yeah. they're going to take that to heart. Absolutely. And I really, most of us really took it. And I mean, with our first, I remember that, yeah, most of our marks were terrible. Mm. And I wanted to, up. I was like, why am I even doing this? I didn't even want to take this subject anyway. I wanted to do history, but my mm-hmm. parents won't let her have that satisfaction. In life, you're always going to have people who are going to discourage you, who are going to tell you that you can't do A, B, C, D. So don't let her win. So fine. I stuck it through with the tears, <laughs> with, <laughs> with the learning and eventually, um, I, I made it, I had, a, and then I had later on for my 11th grade and my 12th grade, I had really fantastic teachers. Mm. Fast forward, um, when I applied for varsity, I didn't quite know what I wanted to be. I thought I wanted to, at one point, I thought I wanted to be an audiologist, thought I wanted to, to go into pharmacy. Mm. Oh, I never had that to be a doctor bag, just be with that. <laughs> uh, I think for me, I always wanted to do the things that not a lot of people were doing. Mm, so I wanted to do something different. Yeah. When I went to a dermatologist once, the next door was an audiologist. And I was like, what is this? This is so odd and so different. But unfortunately, um, audiology and pharmacy were in another campus. So we couldn't afford to send me there. So then I had to look closer to home. Um, And then there was this agriculture degree that my um, dad's friend was an agriculture engineer. And he's like, why don't you try agriculture agriculture sciences and I was like what a farmer like nah (laughs) I was like nah 
grow stuff. <laughs> nah. I mean, I was just thinking like, her mom grows stuff. And I was, at that point, I wasn't really a fan of helping her in the garden. But mm. like I said, it's like, I think it's like some subconscious seeds that are, were being planted in my mind that mm. I didn't quite know. So um, anyway, um, I applied for this agricultural science uh, degree. And um, I didn't get in first time. There was a little bit of an issue with one of my marks when I yeah. finished my 12th grade. Um, I had an issue with one of my marks. I had to even do a remark. So they wouldn't allow me because they said that my maths mark was low to be accepted mm. to that program, even though I was conditionally accepted. So um, the, I couldn't go in. So I had to do a semester of like a social science degree. Mm. And then eventually after a remark, um, I eventually got into the agriculture sciences. And the first year was just a weird blur because we weren't really doing anything agricultural. I think with most people who've done science programs, especially life sciences, uh, you understand that we, we do all of the basics that we did in high school. Yeah, but absolutely. After, yeah, after second year, that's when I was like, oh, yes, this is it. And yeah, I've never looked back. <laughs> and here I am. And here you are. But that's that's really interesting how how the your journey kind of went from, you know, high school and how it wasn't really a smooth road there. And I think you mm-hmm. touched on a lot of really important points. First of all, I really resonate with the whole problem in the education system how they're forced to choose either being in sciences or the humanities but there are people who flourish in both and I think there's so much value sometimes in combining these fields you know yeah um so that's such a great point and also not needing to be necessarily the top of your class for you to succeed in STEM that cannot be stressed enough you know that's so key um so yeah thanks for for bringing that up and also shout out to your parents for letting you not get discouraged by that t-shirt that's really amazing to have that support from your parents definitely my parents like looking back they've been the the biggest cheerleaders and I'm very grateful for them because so many moments I was like nah I don't want to do this Mm. (laughs) so yeah definitely shout out to them no that's amazing okay so just kind of furthering on on kind of your path in science so uh you completed a master's degree this year actually um if if Mm. i am correct and um i think you mentioned that you've just uh you are now officially a phd student which is amazing congratulations for that (laughs) that's a great achievement i'm super proud but um would you like to tell us more um firstly about how it was finishing your master's degree in 2020 with everything that was going on because i can imagine Mm. that came with some challenge but also uh, just getting into the PhD within, again, the context of 2020 and everything that's happening. Yeah. Oh, man. My 2020. Remember when, remember when I said 2020 was wow? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is one of those moments. Where, yep. Wow. <laughs> So um, basically, my master's, yeah, I finished, I finished officially um, in Mar- end of March and I was meant to graduate in April. But of course, the pandemic happened yeah. um, and I was really looking forward to it because my master's had put me through through it it really it really had put me through it um, without going into so much detail it just like emotionally mentally physically like it took my soul so just finishing it was at, well graduating rather was one thing which I was really looking forward to it like I really succeeded and I came through this mountain so um couldn't do the, the 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 celebrations like most people were and I was very disappointed because I was planning on flying family over my grand you know all yeah. these people who have been very who are very um pivotal in getting me to the end because mm. it was a team effort mm-hmm. oh, my masters guys it was a team effort so I really wanted all these people to be there but that didn't happen It didn't, I think the fact that we didn't have that celebration, and I think a lot of people who wanted to to graduate this year can resonate with that. It just felt so incomplete. I think that graduation would have just been like that full stop, but it just felt like a comma. Like it just like the year just carried on and we never had that time 
sit in that like yes well done girl well done you, you did done it. it exactly you've achieved so now um i wasn't quite sure if i was going to go straight into the phd or not i thought maybe i'd look for like internships or a job but of course again the pandemic happened and um and then there was an issue because uh, although i've been in south africa for <laughs> 20 years um, I'm still waiting for my permanent residence permit. So I'm still classified as an international student. So if, in order for me to be legal, I needed to to be registered for a PhD program. So there was at that point also my varsity weren't really were not sure if they're going to take have an intake of new students for the second semester because of COVID and all of the stuff. So I was very stressed. I did not know what next. I literally didn't know <laughs> what next. But my amazing supervisor, uh, who who helped me, he, he was my co-supervisor for my master's project. He told me of an opportunity that came through, and um, there was a there was a scholarship, a funding scholarship. I had to create a concept note, like a proposal, everything in like a week. When I tell you I did not sleep, I did not because I was like, this is it. That is This is it. Like, this is it. Make or break. Like, Mm. I have to apply the scholarship because then it will allow me to think, to register. Mind you, there there were a lot of like... Um, there was a lot of, uh, there was a little bit of concern because initially they were looking for like a person with like cum laude. My master's was not like cum laude. So I was a little bit scared and apprehensive that, oh my word, I won't get in. But mm. I think because I do a lot of other things <laughs> like the podcast and all these other extramural things that I was doing on the side, it really helped with my motivation. And yeah. Um, I think the committee was saying that, you know, sometimes we focus so much on the mark, but we realize that you are contributing or you are able to contribute more than just the mark. So thankfully I got that scholarship and then that's how I got into my PhD. And um, I started recently, um, early August mm. and I was ecstatic because I'd never really saw myself <laughs> as a PhD student ever because I felt like such a far off thing like that couldn't be me you know so when I got there I was really really excited the scholarship came through and then of course um the bits of like self-doubt came in because you know you start to second guess like am I really meant to be here am I not but Absolutely. then I think you know when you surround yourself by people who remind you you know you are great at what you do and you deserve this and you work hard and, and it didn't just fall out of the sky so mm. those big emotions I mean I, I, I can tell there's going to be a lot of emotions on this journey but the difference which I can already see um, between my master's and my PhD just in the three weeks is that I'm able to recognize these things and I'm able to talk about them and to have the support that I did not have when I was doing my master's. So I'm realizing that it will be an easy, it will be an, I don't want to say easier, but it will be a better <laughs> transition into it. Yeah. So that's about it. That makes total sense about how it's, it, it won't be easy. Of course, PhDs are never easy, but I think having that support system and also being able to check in with yourself. I think the maturity you've gained from your master's when you started and now being able to recognize that "Mm, I am having self-doubt and this is probably more intrinsic than it has to do with my lack of ability to perform, you know. Um, And I think it's normal as well um, as PhD students. uh, I'm my second year now and I still sometimes say, what on earth am I doing? So it never really stops, but you always have to remind yourself that you're there for a reason. Um, And I have so much faith in you. So uh, again, congratulations for being able to start this PhD, get through your master's and starting this journey. And just so that people know, um, just quickly before we kind of change gears a bit, what is actually your research on? Um, Because I don't think you quite touched on that. Oh no, I didn't. I didn't. So my research is a completely... I'm really excited about this because um, I did say that I'm an, I'm an agricultural science student. So most people would assume that I'd be planting in the fields <laughs> and planting crops 
and whatnot, which is what I did for my master's. And it was great, but I was like, oh, I'm done with field work. <laughs> it was mm. a lot of hard work. For my PhD, I'm part of like a, um, I go to the University of KwaZulu-Natal here in South Africa. There's a, there's a flagship program that they've introduced called Woodwrights. So basically, we're trying to look, it's a transdisciplinary approach. So basically, it's scientists from various different disciplines. So working together with your local governments and your policymakers and local communities, more areas where there's a lot of, um, where there's a lot of deforestation and a lot of waste and pollution. And we're trying to see if we can introduce trees in these areas so that the ecosystem or the environments can be restored. And also the, the, the communities can be um, involved in planting these trees and finding, and also we're trying to, cause they, they, they also create like a lot of um, waste and pollution. So the local governments are trying to find ways in which these wastes in, in an agricultural sense, they can be converted for like fertilizers and they can be used back you know, for sustainability purposes, like a very big project, which it's not just Anne doing the research. Like mm. I'm working with a lot of people and that's the thing that gets me really excited. The point where sometimes I go like, oh, all right. I'm, like I said, I'm like <laughs> into it. And uh, um, probably now when I listen to this, like three years later, I'll be like, girl, what are we even saying? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very willing to know, like, this is really a bit out of my head. But I'm excited. Um, I'm very excited for this learning opportunity and just working with so many, so many people. And um, yeah, so hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> no, it, it it does. It makes a lot of sense. I think that's a very interesting and relevant project. I love the fact that you're not only just the scientist, you know, trying to do this project, but also involving the community and trying to stimulate, you know, development and empowerment of people in the local communities, which is amazing. And I love the fact that you get to work with people as well, because I do think in a lot of different science disciplines, it can become quite removed from actual mm -hmm people um mm. so that's amazing that you you have this opportunity to have a project that is so relevant and so directly impactful to people within the communities around you that is that is brilliant um, i'm wishing this consortium project all the best and and we're looking forward to 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 seeing the updates um as the time goes on yeah thank you thank you so much and you're right about how science can be a bit um, removed from communities, especially um, us as natural scientists. Mm. We we tend to say we've done A, B, C, D or we're developing A, B, C, D, but are we really working with the communities or the policy makers, which is, which is like, you know, your government, see the, these are the people who actually make these things. So what's mm. the point in you spending three years developing something, but you're not working with the governments who are going to be like, nah, we don't want that. Exactly. So it's the beauty of this is just that this transdisciplinarity, trans <laughs> <laughs> Of we know what you're trying to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which gets me really excited um about about my study. Okay, no, that's super interesting. And um yeah, so on that note, I think a lot of people uh, will be very interested to know more about this podcast, um, the amazing The Root of the Science podcast with your girl and with an E. I love that like phrase. It's like, <laughs> whenever I listen, I don't know, it just tickles me. There's something about it. Like, ah, yeah. Anyway, so, <laughs> so first of all, I'd really love to congratulate you on the success of this podcast. I think for me, it's been extra special because I, I kind of saw it from before it was a thing, you know, from its yeah, the preconception. Beginning, beginning. <laughs> from the beginning, beginning, and it just becoming a thing and it growing. So I feel like a proud um, older sister, mom, cousin, anything. I just feel proud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, congratulations.